In chapter 16, Barth preoccupies himself with a photo of a house. He doesn't say anything terribly significant here. In chapter 17, the notion of duality in photographs is reintroduced. He reminds us of how really engaging photos consist of studium and punctum. What is new here is that he gives those photographs entirely composed of studium a name. He refers to them as unary, for they do not consist of a duality. Barth reaffirms that most photojournalism is unary in nature. You know what other images Barth thinks are unary? Pornographic ones. Pornographic images are just the explicit presentation of one thing. There is no secondary factor that could possibly give rise to a really intriguing duality. Generally, the punctum involved in the duality is a detail, and there is no rule for what constitutes the punctum or where to search for it. It by chance gets mixed into the photograph. In the earlier example of the nuns and the soldiers, it was a mere coincidence that the nuns were in the background. One cannot arrange in advance or justify the punctum. Saying all this, the punctum, this little detail, has the power to expand and take over the photograph. It can either trigger images and memories that transport us to the place of the referent, or it can grab our attention so much that it is all we see. Such an insignificant detail turns out to have a, a rather large haul of aesthetic power. What I find a bit perplexing about this discussion is that the punctum may turn out to be entirely arbitrary. What if two individuals see the photograph differently and identify conflicting puncta? Is this a problem for Barth? If it isn't, wouldn't he have to grant the possibility that all the photographs he considers unary might actually contain a duality he has not yet discover discovered?